This is part 14 of a series on building a full stack web application using Spring Boot and React, where you get to watch every line of code being written and a full app built from the scratch step by step. If you're new, start watching from this video. All right, so now I'm going to run the Maven install one more time and uh, let's deploy this, okay? Let's deploy this to AWS. I'm gonna go to dot dot slash dot dot and then do an MVN install again. I don't have MVN locally, but I can do the MVN wrapper, right? Dot slash MVN W is basically gonna run the MVN wrapper that Spring Boot projects come with. And that's what's rendered. That's what's run this install, okay? Now I have this ready to go. Now I can install this. I'm gonna go over here to my target folder. SRC is closed. I'm gonna go open target and this is my jar file, okay? If I were to open this in File Explorer, here it is. Here's my jar file. Now, there, again, there are a few ways to deploy this to AWS. Uh, I'm gonna choose AWS over here. Um, there are a few ways to deploy it. You can hook it to your Git repo and have a commit do the build and then push it to AWS. You can have like something like GitHub Actions, which does that. I'm gonna do a manual deploy because I don't wanna extend this tutorial by way more than it's already happening. I can probably create a follow-up later, but for now, I'm just gonna do a manual deploy. How do I do this? I'm gonna go first to my AWS console, which is over here, and I'm going to create an Elastic Beanstalk instance, okay? I'm gonna expand services and I'm gonna choose Elastic Beanstalk. Elastic Beanstalk allows me to say, hey, I am creating a Spring Boot environment. I need a Tomcat environment and I give it a jar and then it's gonna do the right thing, okay? So I'm gonna create a new environment and what I need is a web server environment, right? Because I need a web server to run. So I'm gonna click this and then click select and then here say, okay, select a web server environment. I'm gonna say IPL dashboard, okay? Application tags, well, I don't need any of that now. Environment, I'm gonna leave it empty. Managed platform, yes, I want this to be managed. And the thing, what I need is Java. Okay, I'm gonna choose all of the default ones. I'm gonna upload my code. I'm gonna go to IPL dashboard, target, and then this jar. All right, so it's completed uploading. It says file successfully uploaded. I'm gonna click on create environment. All right, so now what it's gonna do is uh, create a Java environment with this particular um, with this particular jar file, okay? Let's wait for it to complete. So this is gonna take some time, and once it finishes, you should be able to see your application in, uh, if you go to Elastic Beanstalk, all right? You can go to services and then Elastic Beanstalk, and you should be able to see uh, your application over here. This is not gonna work right away because it says uh, there's a severe problem. Well, the problem is that the port is not open, right? You're gonna have to fix the port. So what I'm gonna do is go to configuration by going to a software over here, edit, and then I'm gonna set server underscore port, and I'm gonna set this to be 8080, right? These are all the environment variables that uh, the AWS instance has. I'm gonna add the uh, server port as one of the environment variables. Once I do that, it is going to restart uh, the application. One thing that I'm not sure about is uh, it's running on Coreto 11, and uh, the Java version that I have is 15. That might have problems. We will see if that's the case. I'm gonna have to uh, bump down the Java version to Java 11 as well. So we will see how this goes. So this is gonna run for a while. Uh, I'm gonna let it run and then after it finishes, I'm going to unpause my video. Okay, so it's completed it and uh, it still says degraded. So I'm gonna go to causes uh, and all of them are failing with, uh, with a 500. So I'm gonna go to logs and then uh, request logs. Um, I'm gonna say full logs, all right? Let's, uh, let's have it fetch all the logs. And I'm gonna get this one here, just a newer one, download, open it. Then uh, let's take a look at what's going on. Log, let's do standard out. And uh, the message is going to be 
pretty obvious what's going on here. Uh, unsupported class version error, right? Application dashboard has been compiled by a more recent version of the Java runtime, which is 59, all right? That is the problem that I'd feared. Uh, since we're using a newer version of Java, it doesn't support it on AWS. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is do the build again with, uh, with what was the version that supported here? Let's take a look. I think it was uh, 11, right? I think it's 11. So I'm gonna change this to 11 and uh, rebuild this thing, okay? So the way to do that is to go to palm.xml and then change the Java version to 11. You're not using any of the new features anyway, so it should be fine updating this. I'm gonna run Maven install one more time and I'm gonna deploy this whole thing one more time. I don't wanna show you me uploading this and doing all that thing again. So I'm gonna do this one more time and I'm gonna unpause with the result, whatever it may be, whether it works or not, okay? So I'm gonna pause and we will see you on the other side. Okay, so I have re-uploaded with the, with the lower version, which is Java 11. So I have the application over here, which uh, it still says warning because, you know, uh, again, it's the port issue, all right? So what I'm gonna do is go to configuration again and uh, software and change server port to 8080 and then apply. This should restart the server and uh, should be able to see this thing working when I go over here. Right now it shows bad gateway. Uh, we'll see if that changes. Oh, I'm, I'm an idiot. This should be 5,000, not 8080, I'm sorry. So what we're doing here is we're asking Tomcat, the Spring Boot application, to start at 5,000, not 8080. It's already starting at 8080, right? So the reason, the reason we need to do this is AWS Beanstalk assumes the port is, uh, is 5,000. So we need to tell Spring Boot to start at 5,000 so that AWS can see it, not the other way around. I did the exact same mistake the previous time I deployed to AWS and I didn't learn. All right, so this is what you need to do, all right? Let's see if this works. I'm gonna convert, I'm gonna set the port to 5,000, server underscore port to 5,000, and this should now work, we will see. What I had done before was set server port to, server underscore port variable to 8080, which is not required because the default port that the application starts up in is uh, 8080. So we have to make a change to 5000 because that's what uh, Beanstalk expects. So you can either do it using AWS config over here, or you could have put it in uh, the application or properties file in the Spring Boot application, okay? So if you put server port as uh, 5000, then even your local application development would be like you had to type localhost colon 5000 slash to get to the APIs, right? You basically need to make your Spring Boot application start at 5000 for the sake of AWS. So let's see now, let's see how this works. Okay, it's completed it and it still says warning. Um, let's see, I may not know what's going on. Let's see, I'm gonna try loading this. Hey, there you go. Seems to be working fine. So I can click on one of these things and basically load these different teams load all this stuff. This is all loading from AWS, okay? So I've deployed the app on AWS and then this is loading from there. Cool, okay? So we have this thing deployed and um, I guess this is it. Um, as with any good journey, this is not the end, this is just the beginning. What I'm gonna do is, um, let's do a recap of what we did. But before we do that, I just wanna say that uh, this repo is going to be out there on GitHub for you to contribute to, okay? One of the uh, challenges that a lot of people say is like, well, I want to contribute to open source, but I don't know the, the repo as is, right? How do I jump in and make sense of what's going on? Well, you have this unique advantage of having seen every line of the source code being written, right? I've shown you everything that I've done. So you must have good, complete awareness of the source code in this application. So I'm gonna post a bunch of uh, issues, bugs and feature requests in the GitHub repo. I definitely welcome you to try it out and uh, fork the repo, 
try it out, see if you make changes and it works fine and you're happy with it, you can submit a PR. So um, definitely check it out. First of all, play around with it. If you have ideas for any feature changes, you're, you're welcome to do that as well. All right, so let's do a recap, shall we? 